Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, I hope everyone on the line, for the most part, already knows who Energy Toolbase is already. For those of you that don't, uh, we are an industry-leading software platform that specializes in modeling and proposing the economics of solar and storage projects. Um, so we're really good at objectively and transparently trying to figure out how much your solar and storage project can save in dollar terms and all of the other corresponding project economics. And uh, we've been at it for a while. We've been, we've been doing this for about six years now uh, in California. So we've seen a lot and we've learned a lot around the way here. Um, and as you can see on the screen, my presentation is gonna be sharing some best practices on modeling uh, commercial solar and storage projects. And today I'm really gonna be focusing on how to pick and select the best rate schedule. And we're gonna be talking quite a bit in depth about rate switches which is a really important concept for you to wrap your head around if you're out there in the market uh, developing commercial solar and storage. So with that, let's jump right on in. Uh, I'm gonna run through a summary of three different rate switches in each of the big three uh, IOU territories, starting with SDG&E. I'm sure everybody on the line that's an SDG&E is familiar with this one. This is the classic ALTOU to DGR rate switch. Uh, ALTOU being the default rate. Uh, what I want to highlight there on the left-hand side of the screen is ALTOU has very, very high demand charges. Um, we're talking $26 per KW non-coincident, um, and additionally, on top of that, over $30 per KW um, on peak in the summer. Um, so very high demand charges, and what I would actually classify as pretty mild energy charges. You can see kind of in the summer anywhere between maybe about nine and 14 cents. Okay, so when you rate switch and move your customer to the DGR rate post solar or post solar and storage, um, basically what happens is the demand charges go down really significantly and the trade-off is the energy charges go up. That's kind of uh, how the utility is re recovering costs. Instead of doing it through demand, they're doing it through energy. Uh, and this is gonna be really important to keep in mind when we look at some of these case studies uh, and show where storage makes money, where it saves um, when you're rate switching your customer. Um, let me jump, and I'm just moving really quickly here because I wanna get into the case studies. Um, the SoCal Edison rate switch example I have on the screen, um, the GS2 TOU option D is the default rate. Um, that's all commercial customers in the SCE territory. Uh, what is it? With demands between 20 kW and 200 kW are on the D rate. And then again, you would be moving them to the quote unquote solar friendly uh, GS2 TOU option E. And the effect here is very similar to what we just looked at in SDG&E territory. You have really high demand charges on the default rate and pretty mild energy charges. And then it basically flips when you're moving them to the E. The demand charges go down quite a bit uh, and the energy charges um, get rich, get expensive. And also there's some really wide um, time of use differentials as you can see there. Um, very quickly, I threw in a PG&E rate just so I'm making sure I'm covering everybody. Um, and this is the, the B19 moving to the B19 option R. Um, this one here is not as strong as an effect as we looked at on, on the last two. Uh, this one really here, kind of the on-peak summer demand going from about $25, KW, $25 per KW. Um, really, what is that, like one-tenth uh, of that when you move to the B19 option R. Um, but you can see similarities between all three of these rates. And that's kind of the setup that I want to talk about as I now jump in and talk through some case studies that we ran uh, and really found some super, super interesting results on. Um, and I got to tell you, this is actually the first time we're sharing uh, a lot of these findings. Um, so we ran this across a number of different rate switches, the ones we just looked at, and also load profile types. So let me jump into the first one, which is basically a school in SDG&E territory. And basically what we're doing here, what we're trying to study and what we're trying to compare is, is your customer better off once you install a solar and storage project, staying on the current rate that they are on, or 
rate switching to uh, the other kind of solar friendly rate. Basically, where can they save more money collectively from solar and storage? And I'll just tell you the answer, and then I'm going to kind of show you all the uh, the analysis that proves it. The answer is almost always they're better off rate switching. Um, we looked at 12 different runs uh, this week to kind of um, get ready for this webinar. In every single one of those cases, uh, they were better off rate switching. Uh, so in this setup here, we're doing an ALTOU to DGR rate switch. Uh, I'm not going to kind of spend a lot of time talking about all the context of the deal. Uh, the one thing I will mention in terms of um, the settings we used under storage, um, and I will just really quickly plug CPS America. I know they're the next speaker. Uh, so this will be a good segue for them. Uh, but I mention them only because um, the control setting that we ran all of these case studies on was using the uh, the energy tool base IEMS control setting. And right now the CPS integration on our site uh, is the one integration that actually uses the, uh, the IEMS control setting. Um, disclaimer, I think everybody already knows this. Energy tool base is, is agnostic. We are objective. You can see a lot of the uh, integrations we have live on our platform today, and you can model any energy storage vendors, equipment, and control settings uh, through our platform, and we're going to give you a really you know, accurate answer. Uh, but for these case studies here, I did run these based off of uh, the IEMS control setting. Okay, so let me jump right into a document. This is kind of neat. I set up a uh, custom proposal document template just to kind of study what we're looking at here and really look at the breakout of where the savings comes from, um, both when you're not rate switching and when you are rate switching. So, you know, we can see what the total utility bill savings is from both solar and storage. Uh, and then really what I'm wanting to kind of zoom down into is, okay, how does the energy storage savings break out uh, and what we're trying to unpack is how much of it's coming from energy and how much of it's coming from demand. And it turns out, and this is kind of the big finding um, and kind of frankly a little bit surprising to us internally. We, we've been kind of looking at a lot of this data this week. It turns out when you're rate switching your commercial solar plus storage customer in California, the majority of savings, almost at least half, usually in some cases more, actually comes from energy. Um, that That is another way of saying uh, time of use arbitrage um, is just as important as demand management. Let me kind of zoom back to this slide here. So think about that. If we're moving and rate switching to that DGR rate, you know, now those demand charges that the uh, the energy storage system is going to be targeting for demand charge management are, are reduced. They're, they're just not necessarily as high as they were before. But this new opportunity emerges where you have these really wide uh, and lucrative uh, time use arbitrage differentials. And again, going back to um, this slide here is uh, basically what we studied is really saying, okay, well, what was the total savings from storage uh, and what is that breakout? So with that, let me actually jump back to the deck because it's probably gonna be a little bit easier for us to look at it this way. And I've got a table here um, which kind of compares savings in a no rate switch scenario versus yes, we are rate switching. So I know there's a lot of data on the screen. I guess the thing I'd really want you to focus on is the, right on the top of the page, which is, okay, well, how much did you save if you didn't rate switch from solar and storage? And how much did you save if you did? Uh, and you can see um, in that number on bottom, what we actually had on, on this particular run, um, we saved about 36% more from solar and storage. And that's, that's avoided cost. Um, right, that, that's reduced utility bills in the rate switch scenario. Um, so obviously it's gonna be in your customer's best interest to, to rate switch. And then again, really from there, what we're then trying to unpack is down here on the bottom right of the table. Well, well where does that storage savings come from? Uh, and again, it turns out um, at least half of it, in this case, 60% of it uh, actually comes from time of use arbitrage. Um, let's look at the next one, and I know I'm going to be moving pretty quick here, um, but I just kind of want to hopefully get this concept across, and I, I can only do so much in 15 minutes. Um, this is an office in the SoCal Edison territory. Now we're going to be studying the GS2 TOU option D, moving them to the option E. Again, we ran it both ways. We ran it, everything else equal, how much can they save 
staying on that D rate? And then how much can they save if we move them to the, the E rate? Um, so really we kind of looked at and set this up the same way. Um, this particular one here, by the way, this uh, little document template that we built, if you're an existing customer watching this and you want us to um, upload this into your account, just shoot us an email or shoot your account manager an email. Um, we can do that on the back end. That's, uh, that's about a 30 second exercise for us. Uh, and I think it's actually really neat uh, to be able to unpack and look at the breakout of, um, of savings um, under these rate switch scenarios, both solar and storage. Um, so the results on this one are actually very similar to the one we just looked at before it, right? So we are better off, actually, I'm sorry, let me jump over back to the deck. Okay, so here's the office and SCE. Um, again, here, the customer is better off rate switching, 16% more savings. And then zooming in again, well, where are those storage savings coming from? And it turns out, uh, in this case, two thirds of it is coming from energy. Um, so, and then I, I probably won't, uh, walk through the example in the platform, but we did the exact same thing for a supermarket in the PG&E territory. Um, the delta isn't as big, you know, now we're talking about, it's about, you're about 9% better off doing the rate switch. Uh, and once again, you can see um, a lot of the savings are coming from energy. So hopefully that point is coming across. Uh, that's probably a good segue for me to just jump to my last slide. Uh, and talk about key takeaways. So the, so the big takeaway here is this, um, and we're, we're always careful about making generalizations on like, it's always this way. We're, we're very cautious to not do that. Uh, but I am pretty confident in saying that in the vast majority of cases in California, um, a commercial customer that's doing both solar and storage is going to be better off rate switching. Uh, there are definitely some edge cases where that's not true, but I, I think in the vast majority of cases that will be true. Uh, and again, we're, we're talking about you can get more savings uh, when you rate switch. Okay, so that's point one. Point two is time use arbitrage becomes very, very important, equally as important as demand charge management um, in those settings. Um, and that's kind of, I think, goes against maybe like the conventional wisdom of, of commercial storage modeling, because I know everybody always hears it's demand, it's always about demand charge management, um, which of course, it's still very, very important. Uh, but basically, the way these new tariffs are designed, if you're rate switching, uh, you can just see it here in this table, the, uh, the energy side of the equation becomes really, really important because those demand charges get shrunken. Okay, let me go back to my summary slide. Another side point, and this is gonna kind of deserve its own webinar and its own blog, which uh, I'm probably gonna get started on soon. Um, standalone storage deals very well can be viable um, because in those standalone storage deals, those are the ones where you're really just gonna be going after and capturing really big demand savings. Um, uh, of course, the con on uh, standalone storage is you're not going to get the uh, the 26% uh, investment tax credit, uh, but that's actually going to be a really separate kind of follow-up study to look at and unpack. And then I had a couple other key stats here that are uh, really important to point out. Um, I know actually Calsa just made that awesome uh, S-chip um, calculator tool available. We've been looking at that and we scrape that data pretty often. The data will show you today to date, in California, 70% of commercial S-chip reservations, it's been storage attached with PV. Okay, so back to my first point, like this, this, the most cases, um, you know, you're, you're pairing storage with PV in a commercial setting. And again, like I said before, in most cases, we believe it's gonna make sense to rate switch. Uh, and then just one other stat that we pulled from, uh, uh, a recent uh, Green Tech Media Wood McKenzie energy storage report um, that counted uh, about 74% of nationwide behind the meter storage uh, was currently in California. I think that was actually just looking at um, um, year to date in 2019. It's not like all time, but the number's very big is, is the takeaway there. So um, uh, the point that we're pointing out here, I think is uh, it, it's very relevant. In, in most cases, this is the, um, uh, you're going to be rate switching and demand, I'm sorry, and energy arbitrage becomes a huge part of the equation. So that's what I got. Oh yeah, one more quick plug. Um, we've been producing a lot of fantastic content over here lately. Um, these are links uh, to those sites. Um, shout out to Calsa for all the awesome S-chip um, 
you know, both advocacy work and fact sheet summaries that they've been doing. Um, we also, our, our marketing manager, Tracy Fosterling, also published a guide. And there's some other um, recent posts that I uh, encourage you to check out if you haven't seen already. So I'm going to wrap it there. My last really quick plug before passing it back, uh, Brad, is I know a lot of you are current customers already. Um, let's set up a call, uh, a Zoom call with your account manager or, um, you know, Scott, our VP of sales. Let's just kind of make sure you're, you're set up and have everything you need in your account. And then, of course, new customers ask us about the, uh, the CALSA extended free trial.